Are you a new vegan or long-term plant-based eater that's concerned about getting all your nutrition? Don't worry, it's super simple to track with the free Chronometer app, and I'm gonna show you how. So to begin, download the app to your phone or go to chronometer.com on the desktop. I prefer desktop because it's just easier to see everything. Obviously sign up, put in all your deets, and it's very programmable. You can actually tell it like how many calories you want to aim for, what type of macro split, all of that. So do with that what you will. And then you're ready to go. As a new vegan, the biggest mistake I see people make is that maybe they don't track their calories and they just eat the same sort of volumes of food because they're used to that amount filling them up. And if they're eating healthfully, you know, a lot of these foods are lower calories because there's more water, fiber, that sort of thing. So make sure that you're getting enough calories. If you're not sure how many calories you need, download my free vegan nutrition e-guide and it'll tell you how to uh, find out. Anyways, once you've done that, then you're good to go. So we're gonna start adding some foods in. So here's a typical day's nutrition for me. Breakfast often has oats, whether I'm doing a smoothie or porridge. I love me some oats, super helpful. And um, when you're inputting the different types of foods, you can change the uh, serving size. I'm going for grams there. Now it's important to know that not all foods have all nutrients listed. So you could easily pop in a load of foods that are missing the vast majority of nutrients. At the end of the day, you think that you've not eaten anything. So it's important to look for the amount of listed nutrients as you can see it there at the bottom left. I think 82 is the maximum that they list. So this one's got 81 nutrients. I noticed that when you go for the generic thing, like, you know, this just says oats, it often has all of them. If you go for a specific brand, it may not. So beware and, you know, program accordingly. And also don't make the mistake of inputting cooked weight when you meant to put dry weight and vice versa, because that can easily obviously throw you off as well. So 75 grams dry weight of oats is what I typically eat. I've programmed the rest of the uh, day's nutrition. So I've put that into a uh, meal servings as well so stop and have a look at that if you particularly want to if you've highlighted per meal it'll tell you the calories and macros per meal you need to kind of go out and come in again if you want to clear that it's really weird so now i'm looking at the whole day's nutrition so here it tells me calories and it tells me the percentage of calories from the different macros if that's something that's of a concern to you. Now, if you're not worried about gains, brah, then you can just shoot for the kind of RDA of protein for a man. The WHO recommends 56 grams of protein per day for a woman, 46. Uh, as a physique athlete, if you're actively trying to grow muscle, you're in a caloric surplus, you wanna be on about 1.5 grams of protein per kilo of leanish body weight per day. If you're doing a cut or a recomp, so you're either eating maintenance calories, trying to build muscle and burn fat, or if you're on a caloric deficit, trying to burn fat off, and you wanna at least maintain your muscle mass, you wanna shoot for more like two grams of protein per kilo of leanish body weight per day. So that's the one macro that I really take a care of. And then in terms of carbs and fat, if I'm on a gaining cycle, I'll go up to about 20% of my calories from fat, because it's easier to eat your calories from fat, because nine calories per gram versus the four of protein and carbs. And then if I'm cutting, I'll go down to about 10% of my calories from fat because obviously you wanna fill yourself up that bit more. I don't like to see anyone go below about 30 grams of total fat per day though, because we need some amount of fat as the substrate from which we make our sex hormones. Of course, we need omega-3 and omega-6. These are essential fatty acids. The body has no requirement for dietary cholesterol, dietary saturates, but we do need the, these omega fats. So this part tells me my total uh, energy and macros, 209 grams of protein. And if you hover over the bar, it'll tell you where like most of that is coming from. Same for net carbs and for fat. And so we'll scroll down to see what nutrients we've got. Now, bear in mind for my diet, I have added in some processed vegan protein foods. So I go for the healthier versions rather than impossible burgers and things like that, which can raise the risk for heart disease. Not as bad as the beef burgers, but still to quite some degree. So, you know, because I'm an athlete, I have more protein there. Um, if I wasn't an athlete, I would just be eating purely whole plant foods and the rest of my diet is purely whole plant foods. And that's what I really recommend if you wanna you know, get all the vitamins and minerals that you need, other than the one or two things which you need to supplement, which we'll, you know, come to in a bit. 
But basically, you eat the majority, preferably your whole diet from whole plant foods. By that, I mean legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices. And in that way, you'll smash all your nutrients like I have. Let's go through it. So I'm doing about four and a quarter thousand calories because I want to recomp at the minute, burning fat and building a bit of muscle at the same time. I've not actually inputted my water, but that would be um, 100% as well. So I've done about 700 carbs. Carbs, you know, they're our primary fuel source. They like volumize our muscles with their glycogen and holding three parts water. We're primates, all primates eat predominantly carbohydrate. Anyone who tells you to eat meat, we, you know, we're not cats is complete BS. My fiber was nearly 120 grams. The science shows that the more fiber we have, the less the stroke risk is and the less all cause mortality is. So the more fiber we eat, the longer we tend to live. Of course, if you're putting in so much fiber that your body can't handle it, you're not absorbing things, that's not good. You know, we are what we absorb. So if you're changing over to a healthy vegan diet from perhaps like a lot of processed foods or animal products, you know, slowly take out the unhealthier foods and add in the healthier fiber rich foods just to give your gut microbiome a time to shift over. So we're killing off the um, pathogenic bacteroides strains of bacteria that eat all that junk and create death and disease in the body. And we're fostering more of the Prevotella strains that process fiber, that create short chain fatty acids, that promote health. You know, 99% of our health potential is predicated on the genes of the bacteria, the bacteria that we invite to live in the colon. The good guys eat whole plant foods, fiber resistant starch, polyphenols. If you don't know what we're supposed to be eating in order to be healthy, then you just don't understand the first thing about the gut microbiome. That's all I can say. Anyway, starch 205 grams, sugars 336. Some people think that sugar is unhealthy. Refined sugar is unhealthy. Yep, that's horrible. You don't want that in your diet any more than you want meat in your diet. But sugar in whole fruit form, which is where my sugars come from, attached to fiber with polyphenols, healthiest food on the planet. I don't believe the BS. Fat, something for 100 grams because I'm uh, trying to eat lots of calories. Mostly polyunsaturated. Omega-3-6 balance is important. So you don't want more than four to one in favor of omega-3. And you can see here, my balance is about three to one. So that's good. For omega-3s, you need to be eating things like ground flax seeds, ground chia seeds. If they're not ground, you won't absorb as much omega-3. Walnuts, hemp hearts are good. Some greens. You know, there's a lot of ways to get omega-3. Most people's omega-3 is shockingly low through the floor. We need that to be really good. For a male, if you're just getting the plant version ALA, maybe 3.2 grams per day is recommended for vegans to be like a really good amount. For a female, more like 2.2 grams is fine. You can add a EPA, a DHA supplement combined or just a straight DHA. If you're gonna do that, so this is the long chain animal version, which our body, you know, then uses. We can do the conversion of ALA to EPA DHA for ourselves, but if you want to just really have like a fail safe in there, then you could consider this algae based supplement as well. Omega 6, the RDA on here is probably set way too high. We don't really have an RDA, we have an AI, like an adequate intake. And because we've not done the science on how much do we really need, Omega 6 deficiency doesn't present in the West. Um, and so we're just saying, oh, what does an average person eat? Okay, so if we tell people to aim for that, then they're not gonna be deficient. But omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. We do need some because sometimes we need to make inflammation. So it's one of the two essential fatty acids that we must ingest, but you don't want it way high. I actually don't worry. As long as people are getting at least like half the, the sort of AI, um, then I think that's absolutely fine. If you do wanna reach like the government recommended amounts, then as long as you're eating moderate amounts of things like oats and nuts and avocados and things, you're gonna smash it anyway. So it's, it's a real non-issue. Saturated fat for health reasons, you wanna keep that as low as possible. Well, mine's super low there. Trans fats, uh, even worse actually. Um, you only get those from animal products and processed plant foods, so you don't need to worry about that. The only bad saturates in uh, the plant kingdom really is palm oil, palm kernel oil, and coconut oil, so I just don't eat those point blank. Uh, and cholesterol, obviously. That raises the risk for heart disease. Not half as bad as sat fat and trans fats, but it still does. Of course, there's no cholesterol on a vegan diet. Protein, as a hard training athlete and doing a recomp, I'm shooting for about 200 grams per day, so I easily did that. Apparently, you can't get all the essential amino acids on a vegan diet, except here are all the essential amino acids, 250%, 350%, 530%, I could go on. Vitamins, here's all my B vitamins, well over 100%. B12, of course, 
you know, we need to supplement that. And people eating animal products, two fifths of Americans are B12 deficient, and most of them are eating animal products. And it's the supplement injected into the farmed animals anyway, because of the unnatural uh, way in which we raise animals now, so we can murderize them. So it's not just vegans that need to worry about a B12 supplement. Choline, this is actually a conditionally essential nutrient. Um, so we do make choline for ourselves. However, if your B12 is low, if your methionine, which is an amino acid, is low, or your folate is low, you may not um, produce as much. And again, we don't have the science. We don't know how much do we actually need. We know if someone's getting 500 milligrams per day in their diet, that they nearly all seem to be fine for choline. And then we know if people are only getting 50, sometimes they're, they're coming up like short. The vegan society, however, they point to science which shows that 300 milligrams seems to be fine for everyone. So, I mean, I've nearly got the RDA there anyway, which is 500 milligrams, I'm at 459. I like to see people getting 300. The one caveat I'd say for someone who's pregnant, you do risk neural tube defects in the baby if your choline is low. So that's the one time and the need is elevated. They say 550 milligrams per choline. So that's the one time I would have it. So, you know, for the masses, you may not need like 500 milligrams, but if, if you did want to hit that, well, you just need to emphasize. And again, you can highlight on here to see where you're getting the majority of it from. So you can see tofu, so beans basically, quinoa, so that's grains. Beans and grains are the main ones. Um, some brassica vegetables as well are good. Mushrooms are good as well. You can do it, or you can just take a supplement. Of course, if you're pregnant, pregnant then a, a prenatal um, supplement would be recommended. Folate from the word foliage, so I've got 213% there. Vitamin A, people say there's no vitamin A in a vegan diet, there's no retinol, and that's true. There are, uh, however, 600 odd different carotenoids you know, like the famous one being beta carotene, but they're basically yellow, orange, and red, red pigment antioxidants that are in your fruits and vegetables. There's actually a lot in greens as well, but oftentimes the green chlorophyll like crowds it out and you can't see it. But you know, in the autumn, in the fall, when um, leaves, you know, they go from vibrant green and then the chlorophyll dies out and then you see the yellow, orange, and red. They were there all the time. You just couldn't see them. The conversion rate is very low, but there's so bloody much of it if you're eating a half healthy diet that it's a real non-issue. And actually retinol, the animal version of vitamin A, is toxic in higher doses, so go figure. You can see I've got tons of vitamin C. Vitamin D, of course, we should be getting from the sun. If we're not, take a supplement. Uh, half the world is vitamin D insufficient or deficient. Mostly they eat animals, so you know, it's not just a vegan thing. Vitamin E is an interesting one. Um, I've reprogrammed this, so it says 508%. If you had the original amount on here, it would have said 15 milligrams is the RDA. That's the American RDA. In the UK, we say three to four milligrams, depending on if you're a woman or a man. That's the UK government RDA. And so I think it's just, you know, there's no epidemic of vitamin E deficiency in the UK. So I think that's just set far too high. Some of these things are set weird, but as I say, you can change the amounts for yourself. Vitamin K, again, people will say you need K2. Well, bacteria and various organs of the human body convert vitamin K into vitamin K2. For us, you can see vitamin K, I got 617% of the RDA, so I don't think I really need to worry there, do I? And if you were concerned, if you did, did believe the BS that you need direct K2, well, you could eat natto, which has more uh, vitamin K than animal products, and it's the best, most absorbable form. Minerals, smash with calcium, you probably only need about 550 milligrams of calcium per day, truth be told. Most governments say a thousand, but I think that's probably dairy lobbying. Uh, if you look at countries with about 550 milligrams per day average intake, they have less incidence of hip fracture, which is the number one indicator of bone density, versus Western countries. Mostly they get that through dairy, which has too much retinol, again, vitamin A, which actually you need some retinol to make strong bones. You don't want too much. So I think that's likely what's happening there. So don't worry if you're only getting like 750. The UK RDA recently has been changed to 750. I think the UK government have actually done something good there for once. All my other minerals, copper, six, seven, 
six four seven percent smashed it iodine make sure you're eating either some seaweed for iodine or taking an iodine supplement you want at least 150 micrograms per day no more than 1100 if you're eating seaweeds which is the best way to get it as long as you're not a thyroid disease patient if you've got thyroid disease stick to the supplement because the amounts in seaweed are they're so variable because of how nature works uh, but if you want to do the seaweed teaspoon of dulse flakes teaspoon of rame flakes one and one eighth of a teaspoon of wakame one sixteenth of a teaspoon of kelp powder. Uh, these will all get you your minimum RDA. Now this says that I'm getting a toxic load of iron. Now if this was heme iron, 45 milligrams per day is a safe tolerable upper daily limit, but that would be toxic and you'd be risking, uh, you raise your risk for cancer, you'd be producing lots of these hydroxyl radicals there, the really bad type of uh, free radicals, the worst type. But this is not heme iron, this is plant iron, and our body can block up to 80% of it from being absorbed. So once we've got enough, you know, it tends to be a non-issue with, with plant iron. Magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, smashed all of them. Selenium is looking high on here, however, it's not. What happened is I use my protein protein powder at the minute, but that didn't have all the amino acids listed. So I swapped that out for Vivo Life, which does have them listed. Um, but Vivo Life adds selenium. So was this Vivo Life powder, I would be having too much selenium and I'd look to bring that down because that wouldn't be healthy. Um, but it's not, and I'm well within the safe tolerable upper daily limit. Sodium's pretty low. Ideally get that down to about 1500 milligrams if you want to be super healthy. And zinc, smash that too. Chronometer is great. It's got a lot more features which I didn't go through. You can program meals so you don't have to keep plugging them in. You can scan barcodes and things to get the nutrition facts for different products. You can even put in a URL for a recipe and it plugs all the foods in for you, makes it super easy. If you would like my help optimizing your health, body shape or sports performance while not harming animals, head over to henchherbivore.com where we offer online coaching, nutrition plans and consultations. See you in the next video.